I'm glad everybody could visit this virtual ability today. Please be sure you can hear me or see the text chat and that you could see the slides that are at the front of the auditorium behind me. I'm going to present today in both voice and text simultaneously. We do that for maximum accessibility. My name is Jendal Heron. I'm the founder of this virtual ability community here in Second Life. I used to be an educational researcher before I became medically retired by multiple sclerosis. And that is a progressive degenerative brain and nerve disease. I ended up isolated in my home. I didn't have a job any longer. I couldn't go see my children's school activities. None of my friends came by to see me. I was just staring at my bedroom walls and I decided to try out this virtual world thing that I had heard about to see if I could have some social contact. And that was 14 years ago. The metaverse was not new back then and it certainly was not as well developed as it is now. I'm probably now more active socially and certainly at least as busy as I was before I discovered Second Life. So today I'm going to share with you some pieces of generic information to give you some context about the virtual ability community. Then I'm going to ask you to break up into your color teams and you're going to head to a different spot on one of our two islands here and we will give you the swirl so you can get there. When you get to that spot, you will have an opportunity to meet a couple of our virtual ability community members and you can ask them questions about their second lives here in the metaverse. And then at the end, we're going to meet back here to answer three questions about what you have learned. So let's begin. First of all, who is the virtual ability community? We abbreviate ourselves VAI, so you will see that initial as well. We are an international cross-disability peer support community and we have over a thousand members. We're international because the people in the community come from six continents. We do have both Irish and Turkish members. Cross disability, that means that our members who have disabilities, it could be a physical disability, a mental or emotional, or developmental disability. It could be a sensory disability like deafness or blindness. And many of us have multiple disabilities. We offer peer support as well as education, acceptance, and understanding. Thank you, Mook, for adding that. Our community assists people with all kinds of disabilities to enter and thrive in virtual worlds like Second Life and Kitely. Although virtual ability offers various educational and entertainment activities every day, we strongly encourage our members to explore throughout Second Life. You will only find our members on our virtual ability islands for our events. Most of the time, they're somewhere else in Second Life. Many of us act as peer mentors or role models. We are not acting as professionals, even those of us who are professionals in the physical world. Sometimes it's important to communicate with people who are most like yourself, people who get your concerns, who know your language and your point of view. That's why most people with disabilities seek to relate sometimes with other people like ourselves. But we don't want to live in isolation from other people who do not share our disabilities. We do not consider ourselves a virtual leper colony. 
about a quarter of our members do not yet have disabilities. We call them affectionately TABs, Temporarily Able-Bodied. They might be a parent, a spouse, a child, or a friend of a person with a disability. They might be a professional or a non-professional caregiver. They might be an academic researcher, a medical professional, or an educator. Our community has been in Second Life for over 14 years, so we have a good record of continuity within the developing and expanding metaverse. We're widely recognized for the quality of our service to our community. We won the first Linden Prize back in 2009 for a project that has a tangible impact on the real world. We are supported in virtual worlds by a U.S. nonprofit corporation named Virtual Ability, Inc. We're probably the first Second Life entity to be given legal physical world nonprofit status, and I know there are others now. So why do I consider virtual ability to be a community? I've found that communities are quite similar in the physical and virtual worlds. Some professional definitions of community are based on geographic proximity, and that's not us. Nor are we culturally similar. In fact, we embrace diversity. The population of persons with disabilities is the largest minority group in the world, and it is the most varied. In our virtual ability chats in the group, we often hear people say, oh, I didn't know people with that disability had that symptom too. Or they might say, wow, we have the same diagnosis, but your life is really different from mine. Our diversity is a constant for all our interactions, and it requires a group value of respect and accommodation. So we aren't together physically, and we aren't really very similar, but we definitely exhibit other aspects of community. Our members form both close and informal relationships. We promote mutual support among our members. We ask potential new members what the community can do for them and what they can do for the community. We share common values and beliefs. One really important community value is our emphasis on ability, not disability. We offer organized interactions and activities. Some of the most popular that we have are campfire chats and dances. Most of our members exhibit a strong sense of belonging to the community. So how are virtual communities developed and maintained? I would have to say community development is, organ is organic everywhere, physical world and virtual worlds, with biological-like processes of accretion and evolution. Virtual ability supports our members' personal needs when we can. For instance, we maintain residential islands, including low-rent apartments. We provide lots of evidence-based information about health and wellness, as well as about disability. And we hold some events for the community. We do have a niche particular to the larger Second Life ecosystem, and therefore we specialize to fill that niche. We are maintained through the continued interest and volunteer time of so many wonderful community members. You're going to get a chance to meet a few of them during the Q&A sessions. As a community, we interact with other communities and individuals in the metaverse. 
There's information about virtual ability in note cards in the blue giver poster that's to the left of the stage that I'm standing on. So you can click on that poster and it will give you a folder with some note cards in it. One of the note cards in the giver poster tells more about the Second Life Islands that our community maintains. Another note card tells about the exhibits and displays on our Health Info Island, and those are also open to the public. And you're welcome to visit our public areas anytime. There's also a note card in there about our upcoming International Disability Rights Affirmation Conference that will be held on November 26. And we hope that the students will be able to attend some of those sessions. You can learn more about the Virtual Ability Community at our website, and the link is posted there. And you may actually want to open your browser Click that link in the local chat and bookmark the site for later. You probably don't want to look at that now. So, about the Q&A with the virtual ability guests. So here are the student assignments during this next part of the class. You're going to go to an assigned area. Be sure to look around that area a bit because when we get back together at the end of class, I'm going to ask you how that environment supports virtual abilities work as a community. So be sure you look around where you are going to be. I want you to listen carefully to the guest speakers. You will have a chance after they introduce themselves to ask them questions. And your group will be visited by two or more guest speakers. And finally, at the end, you're going to come back here for your quiz. Hi, everyone. I am Sue Ellen Hartsong. I will give this in both voice and text. I'm a member of VAI and help out with the estate managers. Participate in conferences, events by voicing for those who need that help and just do what I can where needed. I've served as an ambassador for See Yourself Health, a project that works with people dealing with diabetes. I have the privilege of being the editor of the VAI Facebook page. The link is in local chat. We as a group gather for events and learning things and just chatting over things. Campfire hour is always fun as we get to talk over things and give each other support. Virtual worlds open up so many things that I'm unable to do in real life. Dancing, being a DJ, meeting my now RL husband in SL and making friends all over the world. James and I met and became fast friends in March of 2012. We traveled back and forth via train for a year between Denver, Colorado and Oswego, Illinois. Getting to know each other in RL and in 2013, James moved me to Colorado and I have been here since. We married in RL on leap day of 20. 16. Not every relationship in Second Life becomes RL. Sometimes people are far apart and cannot meet. I am fortunate with my being able to move across the U.S. to be married to James in both worlds. We still enjoy our a Second Life time dancing, listening to music that we are not able to do in RL. I have diabetes, disc disease, and PTSD that we as a couple deal with together. I hope you enjoy Second Life as much as I do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Hello and welcome. I 
I am James Hartsong, also known as Peaceful James, and I have multiple sclerosis. My symptoms include MS neural fatigue, difficulty processing spoken words, full body neural malaise and brain fog, etc. But MS does not have me. I first came to Second Life over 13 years ago. I read an article that said I could find a support group here for people with disabilities. But when I came here back then, it was all too confusing. I could not begin to find anything, and I gave up. Then over 10 years ago, I tried again. This time I got lucky and met someone while dancing in a club who knew about VAI. They took me there and introduced me to Gentle Heron. She is about as close as you can get to an earth angel, and she has helped in so many ways. Virtual ability became my new home. And I met my real life wife, Sue Ellen Hartsong, here in Second Life. In real life, I am a mostly retired teacher of a form of self-healing exercise called Qigong. I am also a Vietnam and Cold War era veteran and a former self-defense martial arts instructor. Um, at this point, I'm just going to free chat. First of all, question and answer. I am open to questions. If you would like any answers, please go ahead and, and type in local chat, speak in voice as you wish. When did MS hit me in my career? Well, let me think about that a moment. Um, in retrospect, I have discovered that MS actually started affecting me very early. As a child, I remember I had balance issues and it was pretty much impossible for my mother to teach me how to ice skate. Uh, she found that frustrating and sad, but I just didn't think about it at the time. Uh, as I went through life, I found that there were lots of things that I had to put a little more effort into than other people. And I learned how to focus and work through the impediments that I had without even realizing that I was all that different from other people. Um, Obviously, the military didn't catch it with their standard uh, screening physicals and everything. Uh, as they let me enlist when I was uh, on my 17th birthday, actually. And I was able to get through all of the training and uh, parachute training and all of that sort of thing with no real problem. But I always thought, why do I get tired? quicker than everybody else and why do I have to focus my energy to get things done? Uh, of course that helped a lot when I got into the martial arts and uh, became a martial arts instructor learning how to receive energy from the world around me and focus it and use it. And it was sort of an ongoing learning process so it at this point, I'll say, that was a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions? How did my career evolve? Well, I am a retired 911 dispatch supervisor from the Midwest. And I got interested in law enforcement because I needed a job and I actually wanted to help people. And because physically I cannot go out and fight crime, 
this was my way of helping. And 32 years of doing that just was my way of helping. So now I joined Virtual Ability after meeting James. And now I'm able to do a little bit of other help by being a voice for people who cannot speak, helping out and showing students around Second Life, and just lending a hand wherever it's necessary. And it keeps us active in ways that we can't in real life due to physical and limited abilities. You know, I'm going to answer that. I don't think we get a lot of questions about it anymore. In the beginning, um, a lot of people questioned the whole relationship. When you first meet someone in a virtual world and you live a thousand miles apart or even across an ocean, family and friends have a tendency to really question, are you sure you know what you're doing? How much do you really know about this person? Fortunately for us, we both know how to check out backgrounds, and we were very careful. Um, Second life relationships are not always like ours. Probably more than 90% are not. Um, so, yeah, people really don't ask us a lot anymore about you met in second life and got married because we're old stuff now. Next question. <laughs> How does Qigong relate? Well, yes, uh, that is a good question. And I'm actually working on another talk on that very question. But let's see what I can do in the short run here. Um, How does Qigong relate how does qigong relate to um well it relates to my disability because it's greatly lessened the impact of the disability on me when i was first diagnosed they i remember a doctor rather in my opinion incompetent doctor calling me back into her office after she'd gotten some test results and she told me with a very sad expression, she said, I'm, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you have a condition called multiple sclerosis. And there is, it, well, it affects your central nervous system. And there is no cure for it. And she just left it at that. And I went home and thought about it. And I thought, okay, there's no cure for this. It affects my central nervous system. Central nervous system controls things like the lungs and the heart. I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, she didn't tell me that it's not fatal, so I went into a bit of a uh, funk about that, I guess is the term. Uh, a lot of depression, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to die. What the heck? What can I do? And the worst part was I was a single parent with a, a very young little girl that I had to take care of by myself. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to, you know, what am I going to do to make sure that she's taken care of when I'm dead and gone? And, um, yeah, that part was not fun. And I went in for a follow-up with that lady, and I said, okay, um, my one question right now is, how long do I have to live? Because I have to make plans and, you know, make sure that someone, perhaps my mother or someone, can take care of my daughter. And she started laughing and said, oh, you're not going to die. And I stared at her, and I forced a little laugh, and I told her, you are no longer my doctor. And I stood up and left. <laughs> and I started studying MS to the best of my ability, and there was a uh, uh, 
um, and outreach for people with various physical disabilities. Oh. Hello, everybody. We're going to get logged out if we don't move somewhere quickly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Shall we step out of this region <laughs> and come back? Hi, my name is Sky Silverweb. As you know, I am completely deaf in real life. I wore a hearing aid from the age of five, learned to speak, and became a highly literate and voracious reader. Reading books, I never had to worry about anyone. Anytime any, anyone said, I never had to ask what to say, what did he say, or wait for the commercial, I could just read. I lost all my hearing about 20 years ago, and then when that happened, I got tinnitus. My doctors don't know the cause. They guess it was due to cochlear osteosclerosis. It was like a, slit, a switch was flipped. Bye-bye hearing, hello tinnitus, 24-7, 365. Lip reading became an exercise in frustration. Over the years, I have seen ICQ, IRC, AOL, Cybertown, I've done all that. Been there, done that. Until Second Life, many of us will tell you, I am more me in Second Life than I am in the physical world. You cannot imagine how valuable that is for a PWD, that is, person with disabilities. My first friend here was a blue-haired gal named uh, Mercado India. Hello, can I help you? Those five friendly words in text made all the difference to me. When I asked Mercado about being ignored by others, I learned that the voice capability had just been enabled in Second Life. A lot of people were excited using that. Great for them, useless for me. But with Mercado's help, I made more friends. A dead ghost, a dinosaur named Orange, a robot named Tin Man, and Gentle, all willing to use text with me. I kind of felt like an Alice in Wonderland. I was a little female avatar. But I learned all these people had and have different disabilities. Yet virtual ability brings us together as a community of support. We all get disability here. The virtual ability name was clearly not an accident. I was given and also found ways to be useful and to help people. Made many friends along the way. Being invited to do things, and in spite of protesting, I'm deaf, getting told, we don't care, join us, was so empowering. Second Life does not cure my deafness or my tinnitus. Um, it provides relief from the feeling of being closed off from the world that I know is filled with noises and voices. Second Life is such a visually rich environment and the avatars I've met and the friends I've made help me cope with that isolation. I can communicate with people and do things, create art. We can express our real si selves in this virtual setting instead of our disabilities. With virtual ability, I manage the residential parcels on Cape Heron and assist Stepan whenever needed. I also maintain virtual ability's Flickr site. Along the Second Life grid, I'm one of the organizers of Burn2, a Burning Man virtual regional. I am also the IT chair for VWBPE, an international conference for educators in Second Life. I create 3D art for the many venues, such as One Billion Rising in Second Life, VWBPE, and the second annual um, Second Life birthday event, Burn 2 and others. So that's it for iSky, and um, LV is going to introduce herself, and that's me. And as you've noticed, I was voicing for iSky. So, hello, everyone. My name is Lori Von Luster, and you can call me LV.
I work for Virtual Ability as a voice-to-text transcriptionist with an amazing team, Electra and Carolyn. We provide text transcriptions of the presentations for those who require it. This benefits um, people who use assistive technologies or translation tools, or persons with learning disabilities, or those who are deaf or hard of hearing. Pretty much anyone who needs text. I met Gentle Heron in my first year in Second Life. And uh, so that was, I joined in 2006, and this was way back in 2007. And we worked together developing the voice to text transcription service, which supports many conference and events here in Second Life, pretty much anywhere where people are doing voice presentations. I'm also the programs chair for VWBPE, and I get to work with iSky in many ways. That's really it for me, pretty much. So let's find out what your questions are. I think we have time for one question. And then we need to head back to the Sojourner Auditorium. There we go. iSky, could you say more about creating here? So iSky says, here I can build things, I can make art. It all starts with a prim, like this. And she's just created a little block there. <laughs> and it become anything, anything at all. It's only limited by your creativity. Let me see if I have something quick to show you. Oh, <laughs> iSky put out something huge. Here's one example. A dragonfly. iSky says she's sorry to fill your eyeballs with such a huge build. Yep, tiny avatar, huge build. That's right, site. Ice Guy says she has some small ones, but it's time to go back. And there's three questions on the wall. Please type your answers in local chat so that we will know what you've learned. I'm going to break in now and say thank you to the students for attending today. Thank you to your professors for thinking of us and having us as guests in your class. And special thank yous and special hugs to my virtual ability friends for sharing with the class today. The class, uh, uh, thank you all. Your insights are very useful to us in knowing how we present ourselves to the larger world. Thank you, everybody.